something very strange is going on when it comes down to this TikTok though, because the US government, House of Representatives, voted 352 against only 65. Now we gotta force Biden, so $120 billion of your company to sell TikTok, they own it, that the $16 billion that we gotta sell them because China is the enemy when it comes down to this. But out of the 65 that voted against forcing ByteDance to sell, one is Ilhan Omar, one is AOC, both on the Democratic side, the other is Marjorie Taylor Greene. They agreed on something? And Trump and Musk don't think this is a good idea. Why would they say this is not a good idea? Because when it came down to COVID, if you remember, there was one side that said, this virus came from China. Uh, it comes from China. They did, if the US could have united against the enemy China, we probably wouldn't be in a situation we are right now. But when it comes down to TikTok, China's the enemy. How did you so quickly make China the enemy again? It wasn't the case at the beginning of TikTok. So this gets me to think about a couple different things. Who do you fear more? You, if you're an American. Do you fear that this bill could set the precedent that the US government could silence you or force Musk one day to sell X because they feel like he is not responsible or do you fear China more? Really the way you vote it tells you who you fear more. Are US government coming after you or China coming after you? Valid fear for both sides but we're going to get into it today. So if you give value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. By the way, of the 65 House of Representatives that voted against the bill, 50 were Democrats, 15 were Republicans, which means Democrats are more skeptical against TikTok than Republicans are. So let's go a little bit deeper on what some of these folks said. So look, I've been in the financial industry since 9-11, the day before 9-11, and I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have access to in case of many different things. That's why we chose to work with our new sponsor, American Hartford Gold. If you have retirement funds that you cannot afford to lose, American Hartford Gold will ship physical gold or silver directly to your door. Also, if you have retirement funds that you can't afford to lose, now is the time to call American Hartford Gold, a precious metal dealer you can trust. They have the finest products, amazing customer service, and a buyback commitment. They've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them I sent you and they'll send you up to $5,000 worth of free silver on your first order. So text the word VALUE to 65532 or call 866-695-7074 or go to AmericanHartfordGold.com forward slash ValueTainment. Trump, first of all, came out and said, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad. Without TikTok, you can make Facebook bigger. And I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people. There are a lot of people on TikTok that love it. And there are a lot of young kids on TikTok who will go crazy without it. So Trump's concern is more about making Facebook stronger, not really a lot to do with China. AOC came out and said, I'm voting no on the TikTok forced sale bill. This bill was incredibly rushed from the committee to vote in four days with little explanation. There are serious antitrust and privacy questions here and any national security concerns should be laid out to the public before a vote. MTG said, I haven't spoken to Trump about the bill. These were my own conclusions and I made the vote based on my own conclusions and by reading the bill myself, I rise today as the only member of Congress that has been banned by social media. Twitter banned me, banned my personal account on which I was campaigning for Congress, raising money and using my free speech to inform the voters in my district that they can vote for me. This was not by a company owned by China. This was by an American owned Twitter. See, do you fear more America? Because Twitter files, the FBI and the US government was involved there. Or do you fear China more? Now let's go to another one. Elon Musk said, it's censorship and government control. Now, John Kirby on the other end, White House National Security Advisor said, we're glad the House took it up and we urge the Senate to move swiftly on this. So everybody has a different reason why they're for it or against it, but at the same time, you gotta look at some of the numbers. So let's look at what's going on with TikTok and ByteDance. By the way, when it comes down to support for a TikTok ban, Republicans are still more likely than Democrats to back it. So if you look at this number here, March of 2023, Republicans supported a ban 60%, today they're at 50. Democrats were at 43%, today they're at 29. Now keep in mind, this is public sentiment. This is not how the House voted. So Republicans in America, we're all about banning it in March of uh, 2023. Seven months later, they're like, not as much as I was before, but Dems, 
definitely not as much as they were before. That's what this means. Let's continue. TikTok users remain largely opposed to banning the platform. Amongst US adults who use TikTok, they were at 56, they're still at the same place. Now, one of the biggest demographics that totally is against banning TikTok is US teens, ages 13 to 17. If you look at this again from Pew Research, 50% oppose it, meaning no, 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 don't ban it. 18% support it. Yes, let's ban TikTok. 31% could care less whether you do or not. Now, let's get into it. Why is this app so addicting? Check this out. When you look at this data here, look what it shows you. No app gets more usage per day than TikTok. TikTok is 97 minutes a day. People are on TikTok. YouTube is around 80 minutes. Facebook is a little less than an hour. Then it's Instagram. Look at Snapchat. Look at Pinterest. All the way in the bottom. And if you think about, you ready for this data? This is absolutely mind-boggling. How many quarters do you think TikTok has been the number one downloaded app in America? Quarters. How many quarters do you think? I want you to actually guess. Each year has four quarters, okay? How many quarters do you think it's number one? You ready? Look at this year. This shows you they've been the number one downloaded app five years straight. That's 20 quarters in a row. Instagram is number two. Snapchat, number three. Then it's Facebook. Then it's YouTube. Then it's X. Now you see why TikTok has so much influence. Around 170 million people use TikTok in America. That's why they've been number one for 20 quarters in a row based on this data. And by the way, when you think about ByteDance, they did $120 billion in 2023, 16 billion was in US, and it's climbing. And if you look at this chart, it shows you US digital advertising revenue change from a year earlier. Look who's all the way at the top. TikTok is up 32%, Instagram 17, then it's Facebook, YouTube, then it's Snapchat, then it's X at the bottom. Now it's important to realize the numbers I showed you about the last five years of being most downloaded app uh, quarter by quarter, a lot of these other companies in America have been around for a while, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most popular website or app that's used in America. If you look at this data here, this is a question that was asked. Percentage of adults who say they ever use the following apps. YouTube, all the way at the top, then it's Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Snapchat, X, then it's Reddit. But if you look at the age categories, look at ages 18 to 29. YouTube is still number one at 93. Then it's Instagram, then it's Facebook, then it's TikTok. And you got a couple other these data that, that's coming up. By the way, this is as of September 5th of 2023. So one thing most people don't know is most people think TikTok is the same exact app that is in China, but it's not. It's the same technology, but it's another company called Douyin. They're both owned by ByteDance, Douyin China, you know, TikTok US. So now when you think about Douyin, 87%, give or take, of the revenue ByteDance does of the $120 billion is Douyin. Only around 13% of the revenue, give or take, 16 billion of it, of the 120, is TikTok in the state. So one thing you need to know about Doyen, Kaiser Kuo, who is the host of Seneca Podcast, a US-based podcast on current affairs in China, said the following about Doyen. It's essentially the same stuff. He's telling ABC. It's shredding guitars and funny skits, people showing off the material, different parts of life, and people doing clever recipes. It's people doing dance moves and unboxing or whatever the hell you find on TikTok here, you find there as well, except it's censored. In the US, children experience the same version of TikTok as adults, while children, that includes more educational content, they said China has cracked down on internet use amongst children. In 2021, the Chinese government enacted a law calling for the creation and broadcast of online content conducive to the healthy growth of minors. In 2021, Douyin imposed a 40-minute daily limit for users under the age of 14. And in 2021, Chinese regulators introduced a rule that will limit children under the age of 18 to two hours of smartphone screen time each day. So, so now that you kind of have an idea about what TikTok is, Douyin is, Bike Dance, all the different people, what roles they'll play, let's actually look at this bill to see why they're calling this the Patriot Act 2.0. So, so in one part, it says this bill prohibits distributing, maintaining, or providing internet hosting services for a foreign adversary controlled application. Another part in the bill, it says this bill authorizes the Department of Justice to investigate violations of the bill and enforce the bill's provisions. Entities that violate the bill are subject to civil penalties based on the number of users. Okay, that's a little bit general, right? Which means a lawyer, a deceptive lawyer, can use that and pin it against the company in U.S. And it continues to say, the bill gives the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia exclusive jurisdiction over any challenge to the bill. Further, a challenge to the bill must be brought within 165 days after the bill's enactment date. A challenge to any action, finding, or determination under the bill must be brought within 90 days 
of the action finding or determination. So lots of information here, right? I mean, you obviously realize the power TikTok has, how they're growing. I'm sure Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or any of these companies would be very happy for TikTok to not even happen in America, let alone somebody else buying them out. And there's a lot of different people that are buyers, Larry Ellison and Walton family, Walmart. There is Microsoft who owns LinkedIn. They may even want to buy this. There's Mnuchin maybe coming and putting some money. There's so many different names that you're hearing about this. I was on CNBC with Brian Sullivan last week. He asked me the question about TikTok and he brought up David Sachs and Musk and all these guys. I said, it's a different story if somebody in America just buys TikTok and there is no bill. That's fine. You bought TikTok, right? But then there's the other side where a bill is being created to force the sale of a company. What if that bill is later on used to force Elon Musk to sell? And, and the other one, let's put the hat of G. Okay, think like somebody from China, right? And ask yourself, huh, what would happen if somebody in the U.S. bought TikTok? ByteDance is now one of the biggest companies in China, bigger than Alibaba, based on some articles we read up, bigger than Tencent. So it's not like it's a small company. So if you're that big in China, you probably have a very close relationship with Xi and the Chinese government, right? So do you think China wants somebody in the U.S. to buy TikTok? And the next thing you know, we find out about TikTok files and the communication people at TikTok had with China. And those emails are released with the involvement of the Chinese government. And God forbid Trump gets elected. He's talking about 100% you know, tariffs and tax. Can you imagine how bad that could be for China? And then what if they go into TikTok and they notice the level of investigation they're doing in other countries, maybe Germany? maybe Europe, and then now you're losing trust with other countries? I don't know. I, I don't know if there could be a small percentage that China doesn't even allow anybody in the U.S. to buy it. And China just says, 16 billion a year out of 120 billion? Forget about TikTok. We don't need to sell. The same way Huawei, all of a sudden in 20, whatever, 17, 2018 under Trump, was banned from doing business in the U.S. because Huawei's daughter who was a CFO while she was in Canada. She was indirectly doing business with Iran, even though Trump said don't do business with Iran. Huawei got banned. What if China says, then says, you know what? We're not selling. We're just shutting down TikTok operation US. Think about what happens then, right? So who knows what's going on behind closed doors? But there's definitely a lot of weird reasoning why so many people are interested in this product called uh, TikTok. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I did another video on China cracking down on people that said bad things about the economy and what's going on there. If you've never seen this video, click here to watch the video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.